up. We should be fine. So let me introduce our speaker today. So it's uh, Dr. Riz Hu. And uh, uh, Rui is currently a uh, uh, postdoc in, in TAP with us. So uh, maybe you have met him uh, in the corridor or you are working with him. So he received his uh, bachelor degree from Wuhan University in China in 2014. And he got his PhD degree in physics at NCU under the supervi uh, supervision of uh, Chi Hua Zhong that uh, most of us uh, know, uh, know him in early 2019. After that, he continued uh, to do a postdoctoral research uh, still with Chi Hua uh, until now. Uh, so he's uh, the recipient of the Chinese government award for outstanding self-financed students abroad and have been elected as a young scientist for the uh, 69th uh, Lindo Nobel Laureate Meeting for Physics in 2019, as well as the Global Young Scientist Summit in 2021. Uh, Rui, uh, uh, research interest focus on light matter interaction uh, uh, for quantum photonic application. So uh, with that, uh, Rui, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you for being with us today. Okay, uh, okay, thanks for Prof's kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Su Rui. Um, it's, it's, I'm very happy to be here to give this seminar in the division. And, um, and probably I'm not new to many of you since I have been here in the division for a long time, where I spent my PhD and postdoc here. So, okay, um, so my talk will be about external polaritons in late highlight parallel spectral micro cavities. Here is the outline of my talk. I will start with the uh, research background and the uh, fundamentals of external polaritons. In the following, I'm going to introduce our experimental progress of external polaritons with perovskite microcavities about how we create and how we manipulate those external polariton states with artificial potentials. In the end, I will give you a short summary and some outlook. So the history of polaritons can actually date back to a, a, uh, the seminal work by a very famous Chinese scientist, Hun Huang, for his famous Huang equation that described the interaction between lattice vibrations and electromagnetic waves. By combining this Huang equation with Maxwell equation, one can directly derive those solutions. It actually describes the uh, dispersions for a normal cross particle called phonon polaritons. As you can see in, in, with their dispersion, instead of being pure phononic or pure phantonic, this type of normal cross particle will behave like a half light, half matter cross particle, become a more, for example, phon phantonic like to a more phononic like. Instead, the other branch will have the total opposite trend. So since then, the work have actually uh, opened the world of polaritons. Essentially, polaritons uh, is a type of hybrid cross particle that result from the strong coupling between a matter excitation and photons, for example. Well, in solid state, state, in solid state system, there are many types of uh, matter excitation that can form polaritons. For example, phonons for phonon polariton, excitons for exciton polaritons, as well as plasmas or uh, magnons. So in semiconductor system, one of the matter excitation is the so-called excitons, they are bound electron hole pairs, which usually dominate the uh, intrinsic optical property of a semiconductor system. In general, there are two types of exciton states in, in nature. One is the so-called one mil mode excitons, typically in inorganic semiconductors. They have multiple radius, as you can see here, they are free to move inside the crystal. So another type is the so-called frank excitons, typically in organic semiconductors, they have very small ball radius. They are tightly bound together and deeply tied to the lattice field. So as we know, exciton states generally follow a hydrogen-like model. They can form a series of astonic states below the conduction band, where we call them as the Rydberg series. And in experiment, one can direct probe those uh, Rydberg series states by using, for example, a optical spectral optical absorption spectroscopy. As you can see here from the absorption uh, spectrum, one can uh, realize a, a few uh, discrete and narrow peaks that correspond to the uh, Rydberg excitons with different quantum numbers. 
So to reach strong copper regime with axon polaritons, one will need to put an emitter that contains axiton state inside a microcavity. In general, there are two types of parameters that determine the light matter interaction regime. One is the decay of the particles. The second is the coupling strength between these two types of particles inside the microcavity. So if the coupling strength between them are not strong enough, for example, if 2G is smaller than half of the total decay, the system will reach into a weak coupling region. In this case, it will be a perturbative process to modify the dynamics of the emitter. And one can use those weak coupling regime to enhance the spontaneous emission of an emitter, which is the so-called Purcell effect. Well, in, in, in another regime, if the coupling strength is very strong, for example, 2G is larger than half of the total decay, the system will reach into the strong coupling regime to form cross particle of axon polaritons. It will be a non-perturbative reversible energy exchange process between excitons and photons inside the microcavity. And this is the so-called Rabi oscillations. Well, up to now, the most um, well-known platform for the investigation of microcavity exciton polaritons are the, this type of um, blunder microcavities that consist of two distributed rock reflectors that contains a typically a quantum well with excitons. So typically one will need to tune the uh, cavity mode to be resonant or near resonant with the axiton level to reach strong coupling regime. So once the system reaches into a strong coupling regime, two new energy level will arise with a typical energy splitting that corresponds to the Rabi splitting. And the two energy level are the upper axiton polaritons and the lower axiton polaritons. As a result, their uh, dispersion will also change dramatically. And as we know, uh, within a limited uh, wave vector, the dispersion for axons is usually considered to be flat. Well, the photons, cavity photons, follows a um, parabolic dispersion as shown here as a function of the K. If the system reaches into a strong coupling regime, the upper and the lower polariton will arise with dispersion as shown here. So since they are half light, half matter cross particle, for example, the lower polariton will behave to be a more uh, phantonic-like to a more astonic-like. And on the other hand, the upper branch will have totally opposite trend to be more astonic-like to more uh, phantonic-like with a typical anti-crossing feature. So here we show a very typical um, polariton dispersion from a Gannon austenite system where we clearly see this anti-crossing feature with a typical uh, Rabi energy splitting. So since axon polaritons are hybrid light matter cross particle, they essentially are mixed axon photon state. And in this case, they have inherited all the advantages from their uh, components. For example, from their phantonic component, they have inherited a light effect mass from, um, from pure from phantonic component which is one, which is uh, 10 minus eight order of a atom. And in addition, with a photonic component, they can be easily confined in microstructures, which is typically very difficult for uh, pure acetones. While their acetonic component provide them strong nonlinear chi-3 interaction, which is usually um, orders of magnitude higher than pure photons. In addition, with acetonic components, it provides optimal gain for them to, for example, to realize lazy action. Also, it provides them the enhanced sensitivity to its term stimuli. For example, the, uh, the sensitivity, to, sensitivity to electric field or magnetic field. So being a strongly interacting bosonic uh, cross particle with lightly effective mass, axon polaritone system uh, represent a promising system to realize boson Einstein condensation at high temperatures. So we know that in, for, in, for, uh, in, in nature, there are two main types of particles. One is fermion that follows the Pauli exclusion principle, which means that each state can only have one fermion, while, while a large fraction of bosons can occupy uh, simultaneously the, a single quantum state to form a boson Einstein condensate. 
So this phenomenon was actually first demonstrated in uh, atomic system in rubidium atoms at very low temperature, close to the absolute zero temperature. As you can see here, by decreasing the temperature uh, to this transition temperature, a large fraction of rubidium atoms can occupy the uh, ground state to form a condensate. So this phenomenon was actually awarded with the uh, Nobel Physics Prize in 2001. So if we look at this uh, transition temperature relationship more closely, we can understand this transition temperature actually is related to the effective mass of the boson as well as the density of the boson. So in this case, uh, accident polaritons represent a promising candidate to realize it at a high temperature because of their uh, very low effective mass, which is 10 minus eight order of magnitude of the, a, a atom. So uh, in addition to realize a uh, high temperature BC, well, with those unique properties from their components, they have played important roles in not only in fundamental sciences, but also in novel practical applications. So for example, with the spontaneous coherence during the condensation process, they allow us to reach collective polar to BC or superfluidity or quantum vortices for the study. In addition, as the condensate is coherent, the emission from the condensate itself actually serves as a lasing action. That is the so-called polarton laser. They are usually have um, very low thresholds because of the exemption of published inversion. Well, in addition, with the strong linearity from their uh, astonishing component, they serve as a good, a good platform for the investigation of nonlinear optics. And this nonlinearity can be further explored to realize or optical ultra fast logic gaze. Well, with their fentonic components, they can be easily confined in microstructures to, to, uh, to trap them to serve as artificial atoms. This provides us a way to uh, emulate quantum matter or realize topological polaritons for robustness. In addition, being intrinsically lossy, polariton system also provides a good platform for investigating the rich non-cremation physics. Well, experimentally, uh, the history of external polaritons can date back to the uh, observation of polariton modes in gallium austenite system, and then goes to the cadmium telluride system, where people have realized polariton BC with the, uh, the cadmium telluride system. However, one limitation in this system is that their uh, excitons is not robust at high temperatures because of these uh, limited exciton binding energy. So, which means that all of the finding and experiments with those systems have to, have to perform at cryogenic temperature. Although up to now, the most mature system is the, uh, the gallium austenite system because of the clean environment as well as the uh, mature fabrications. So, in the past 20 years, the field is actually uh, uh, actively developing NOVA systems to reach high temperature uh, phenomena and NOVA systems. And it starts from the white band gap semiconductors, for example, gallium nitride, zinc oxide, or goes to perovskite system with broad tunability and large binding energy, as well as the um, robust organic system that hosts different excitons with very huge uh, binding energies. And more recently, those monolayer transition metal detrigonites that provide very uh, strong oscill oscillator strengths as well as uh, robust excitons. And in the past years, our research are uh, generally focusing on this type of uh, perovskite semiconductors. In the following, I'm going to introduce how we uh, use those systems to create and manipulate polariton states. So uh, as we know, in recent years, uh, late highlight perovskite have attracted considerable uh, attention because of their exceptional performance uh, in uh, photovoltaic as well as light emitting applications, such as in solar cells, uh, in lasers, as well as the light emitting dials. So thanks to, thanks to their uh, distinct uh, advantages, for example, direct band gap semiconductor, as well as strong oscillator strengths, and high absorption coefficient. Most importantly, their large 
and some bonding energy. So they emerge as a very uh, good system to reach strong light matter coupling regime for uh, accident polarization studies. So indeed, people have used such a uh, perovskite system to reach a uh, strong coupling regime at high, high room temperature, where uh, the history can date back to the uh, observation of such anti corrosive feature with a grating structure 20 years ago. And also, uh, people use a plantar microcavity to reach strong coupling regime with this type of 2D perovskite. However, in previous studies limited by the uh, short polarity lifetime and inefficient relaxation, polarity condensation always uh, remain elusive for almost 20 years. So in this case, uh, we start from the uh, thinnesses of high quality crystals, perovskite crystals, and we develop a very uh, unique vapor phase thinnesses method that allows uh, the Wadamore's epitaxy to grow high uh, quality crystals as shown here, where um, with this method, we can get those individual nanoplatelets with well-defined shapes as well as uh, control thickness. In addition, we also can grow it into uh, continuous films in the centimeter scale. And by changing the composition inside the uh, perovskite crystal, we are able to uh, precisely tune the intrinsic as tonic property of the uh, perovskite throughout the whole visible range. And those light individual crystals also have been shown to support a uh, high quality visible gallery mode lasing throughout the whole entire, uh, throughout the whole visible range with high quality factor over 4,000 at room temperature. So having obtained such nice crystal to reach strong cover regime for external polaritons, we will need to strongly couple it with a microcavity. So in this case, we uh, develop a, a, a um, fabrication method of uh, EV evaporation for those mirror fabrication as shown here. Uh, the microcavity consists of two uh, distributed bright reflectors that, can, that consist of uh, pairs of half lane dioxide and silicon dioxide. In the middle, we send a, a layer of um, inorganic perovskite. So to probe the polariton property, we developed a home built angle resolve setup to probe their dispersions. So as you can see here, uh, we performed the angle resolved reflectivity measurements as well as the angle resolved emission uh, uh, measurement. As you can see, we can distinguish a clear dispersion with corresponding to the lower polariton uh, branch. And, and this can be also seen in their emission spectrum. And most importantly, with the increasing of the emission angle or moment, implant momentum, the curvature keeps bending, which is the uh, signature of strong coverage. So to analyze those dispersions, uh, we can write the Hamiltonian in the matrix form where the, uh, here shows the energy of the axonal state and, a cap, and here shows the uh, cavity mode while the G represents the coupling strength between the axonal modes and the cavity modes. So by solving the Hamiltonian, we can derive those uh, axonal polarity dispersions. By fitting those uh, experimental data, we will get this uh, very large rubber splitting energy of around 270 and 70 MeV at room temperature. So um, in order to reach polarity a condensation at high temperature, we use a pulsed excitation to pump it. By increasing the particle density, uh, we can see such transitions. As you can see here, below the threshold, uh, polaritons occupy all the states in the lower branch. At the threshold, polaritons occupy more at the ground state. And once above the threshold, the ground state is massively occupied. So such microscopic occupation of the lower polariton ground state above a threshold strongly suggests the occurrence of polariton condensation in the system at room temperature. So in addition, we also provide uh, evidence for this occurrence of condensate. So the first one is the nonlinear intensity output with, with the increase of the pumping power that is actually as a result of the final state simulation because more particles are injecting and the, uh, the faster the relax relaxation. 
And the second evidence is the uh, narrowing of the line width of the mode that suggests the uh, super, uh, suggests the in increase of the temporal coherence. So thirdly, because the interaction between polaritons are, are, are repulsive, so with the increase of the pumping power, more polaritons are produced. It will result in a continuous blue shift with the increase of the pumping fluence. So in addition, the occurrence of the uh, polarion condensate is usually accompanied by the long range order that is manifested as the microscopic phase coherence. So in this case, we send the emission of the condensate to a microson uh, interferometer with one arm replaced by a retroreflector to invert the image in a central symmetric way such that we can probe the phase coherence throughout the whole emission image. So as you can see, once these two images are superimposed, um, clear interference fringes can be observed throughout the whole uh, profile. So this suggests the buildup of long range coherence uh, around 12 micron, which is much larger than the thermal deployed wavelengths. So uh, although polarion condensate uh, shares a lot of similarities with atomic system, they still have a few differences. For example, in atomic system, uh, usually the condensate is achieved by decreasing the temperature to this uh, transition temperature. And we know that atoms is usually long lived. They have long lifetime, which means that those condensation processes usually in server equilibrium that goes to the ground state. So while a uh, polarity system is quite different, what the polarity condensate is usually achieved by increasing the particle density to trigger efficient relaxation process. And they have very short lifetime, typically in the picosecond range. And so, which means that polarity condensate as shown here, it keeps decaying and escaping the microcavity. In this case, we will need to continue uh, pumping the system to feed the, the, the microcavity to produce the condensate. In this case, it is actually a non-equilibrium process and a, they have a driven dispatch nature. This nature actually provides us a way to create non-ground state uh, condensate with high K. So, so in the following, I'm going to show how we create those high K condensate with propagations. So here, as shown uh, the image here, we introduce a, a 1D wire inside the micro cavity. This allows to confine these uh, polaritons along one direction. And we pump the wire with a small pump spot and show the circle here. And once above the threshold from the real space image, we can see that throughout the whole wire, we can clearly see these uh, interference fringes, which means that polaritons uh, produced inside this pumping area or have to propagate outside to the end and go back to interfere with those incoming polaritons. This suggests uh, the, the condensate we produce is actually a, a non-ground state with some implant momentum. So this can be confirmed by measuring their uh, dispersions as shown here, where we indeed can see such a non-ground state uh, condensate with high K. So to further uh, probe those propagation dynamics, we, we uh, pump the end of the wire as shown here. While uh, once above the threshold, as you can see from the real space image, still throughout the whole wire, uh, we still can see such interference fringes. It means that uh, the condensate produced in one end have to propagate outside to the other end and get back to interfere with those incoming condensate. Well, this suggests, well, some polaritons have at least propagated twice of the wire length, which is around 60 micron uh, at room temperature. So this feature actually can be explained by their driven displacive uh, nature, as well as the re repulsive interaction. So since we are pumping the small area, we are injecting polaritons inside once once the particle number get increased and their interaction, their repulsive interaction will result in such a blue shift potential hue. So since the lifetime of polaritons is very short, they cannot be stable at the top of this potential hue. In this case, such blue shift potential energy 
will convert into the kinetic energy of the condensate such that they can gain some implant momentum to propagate as shown here. So furthermore, by analyzing their uh, dispersions, we can extract their group, group velocity as, uh, with this equation as shown here. So we understand that for this particular state, the polarity condensate is actually propagating at a very high group velocity of 10 power seven meter per second. And such long range propagation is very essential for uh, realizing or optical circuits with external polaritons. And indeed, people are using it for uh, realizing, for example, spin polariton switch, as well as polariton transistors for building those four optical circuits. While most of these schemes are in early days are limited in getting oscillate system. Well, to, to, to demonstrate such, for example, or optical switching, um, with our perovskite system, one will need to show a strong nonlinearity exists in our system. So here we, we demonstrate such strong nonlinearity by showing a, some nonlinear phenomenon that is the uh, parametric scattering, which is actually a four wave mixing process. So to, to uh, realize it, one will need to um, comply this energy and the momentum conservation simultaneously and in, in polariton system, this um, can be easily achieved by, for example, introducing uh, more optical modes inside the system. And condensate produced in one branch of can scatter to the uh, to nearby state with the same energy as shown in the schematic here. And so this can be readily achieved in our perovskite system where we indeed can uh, introduce more optical modes inside the system by increasing the cavity lens. As shown here, we, we see such um, multiple branches. And once we increase the pumping power, you can see that condensate produced in the ground state of this branch can scatter to the nearby state at the same energy, but opposite uh, momentum. So in this case, this, uh, these two rules have been achieved. So by analyzing those, um, scattering signal state, we, 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 we can see a very clear super uh, uh, linear increase of the intensity. This suggests the transition from a ready scattering in the linear region to a parametric scattering in the nonlinear region. So now we have demonstrated that strong nonlinearity exists in our perovskite system. Combined with previous demonstration of long range propagation, we can really achieve those uh, or optic switching at room temperature. So here shows the schematic here. We, we pump, we use a source beam to act as the source, uh, polarizing source to propagate along the wire as shown here. And in the downstream, we, we use another beam act as the block. So due to the repulsive interaction, once the block beam is there, they will introduce a blue sheet potential to stop this uh, propagation of the source beam. So once these two beams are correlated in time, as you can see here, the propagation of the source beam is actually stopped. So this acts as a, a or optic switching process. So uh, having created those polarizing state in the following, I will show that how we uh, manipulate those polarizing state with artificial potentials. So we know that in the field of cold atom system, the introduction of, cold, uh, of optical lattice have largely promoted the development of quantum simulation. Well, indeed, people can simulate those uh, boson Huber model to, to, to realize the quantum phase transition, for example, from superfluid to mod insulator by changing those tunneling coupling as well as on-site interactions. Well, indeed, people are using those systems to, to simulate quantum phase transition. However, as we know, they can only operate at very uh, low temperature, close to the absolute zero, te zero temperature. So in this case, there have been a long desire to use, uh, for example, polaritons, which can serve as the solid state analog of cold atoms in optical lattice. So one of the requirements is to introduce uh, periodic potentials to trap those polarizing states uh, in the system. And indeed, for example, in previous scattering oscillate system, different type of periodic potential can be introduced 
inside the, the, the uh, per, per micro cavity. As shown here, people indeed can introduce, for example, the honeycomb lattice to simulate uh, those direct cones uh, from condensed matter or even with a magnetic field, one can simulate those quantum hole phase with polaritons um, at, at slightly higher temperature at 5K compared with those uh, cold atom system. However, as we know that in previous gallium austenite systems still have some challenges. For example, they, they have to operate uh, at cryogenic temperature at 5K because of the uh, small binding energy. In addition, because of the weak lateral confinement, their gap opening is, is usually very small as shown here. So it makes those device or a normal phenomenon hard to observe. Well, in this case, we start to think about how you introduce those periodic potentials with uh, our periodic system. And here is what we did. And we actually introduced a, um, a spatial layer of PMMA in between this uh, micro cavity on top of the perovskite. And before we deposit those top DVR, we can use, for example, even isography to easily uh, modify the, the shapes of this spacer into different pattern. And here we start with a, a single atom chain in 1D. So here shows the uh, AFM image of the lattice. It consists of 10 pillars. And for each two pillar, it, it, they are connected by a, a, a channel in between. So if we look at this uh, single pillar, it actually traps the polariton, polariton state to serve as a artificial atoms, as shown here. So they behave pretty much like the uh, atom state, which hosts those, those orbital states, for example, the ground state as the uh, ace orbital state which usually have a cylindrical symmetry. And the first exciting state is the P of the state, which usually are twice degenerate, which have a two knob feature in each pillar. And we can directly probe those features by measuring the energy resolved spatial image uh, from, one, from a single pillar. As you can see uh, in the ground state, we indeed can see such S of the state at a higher energy, we, saw, we see such um, p orbital state with a two knob feature. So in order to understand more about the band structure of those uh, 1D single atom chain, we actually develop a model by writing those uh, coupled Schrodinger equation by strongly couple this photon field and, and also the astonic field uh, inside the equation where the G where, where this G represents this uh, Rabbit splitting energy between the system. So we can further write it in a matrix form to, to solve it, to understand the uh, band structure theoretically, to find out those eigenvalues. So, so in order to understand uh, those band structure experimentally, we probe the dispersion by measuring their momentum resolved uh, spectrum as shown here. So it is no longer a, a near parabolic dispersion as, as before in a planar microcavity. Instead, a huge gap opening happens inside the dispersion with clear uh, anti-quantic feature. This is the typical signature of the, uh, the, the periodic potential. Well, in order to understand more about the band structure of the lattice, we perform the uh, energy resolved uh, real space imaging as shown here. So we first take a uh, cut along the, this dash line here for the ground state. We indeed see such as optical state in each pillar, which shows a clear uh, cylindrical symmetry. At a higher energy, close to the gap, uh, that corresponding to the, the uh, China state in between of two pillars. And I, at an even higher energy, we indeed can see such um, P state with PX and PY. So to understand more about the gap opening, we have a slide across the gap as shown here, where we can extract a very large gap opening of around 13.3 MeV, which is actually one order of magnitude higher than before. So theoretically, uh, theoretically we can reproduce those, um, those experimental data perfectly in, as shown here, which is actually done by um, 
group teams in news group. So in order to reach nonlinear region to get those condensate inside the lattice, we pump the lattice with a pulse excitation. And here shows the uh, experimental data on dispersion, while below the threshold, we, we show a typical um, lattice dispersion as before. Once above the threshold, all the state or a, a higher energy state occurs very, with very strong emission, which suggests the occurrence of uh, this condensation into this particular state. By looking at the real space image, we can see that in each pillar, uh, we, we observe a two knob feature that corresponds to the, uh, the PY state. So, so this suggests that polarity condensation actually occurs into this PY state. And this is actually the first uh, realization of polarity condensate in a strong lattice at room temperature. So, so furthermore, uh, the occurrence of condensation is actually usually accompanied with the long range spatial coherence. So we send this, uh, the image of the lattice above the threshold into a microsecond interferometer with one arm is replaced by this retro reflector to flip those uh, image in a center symmetric way. So this enables us to probe those uh, global uh, spatial coherence throughout the whole uh, profile. So as you can see here, um, and the top panel shows the uh, real space image of the lattice, which shows the condensation into the PY state. And once, once these two images are get superimposed, and we can clearly observe those interfering fringes throughout the whole lattice. So this suggests such long range spatial coherence is actually built up in, inside the system. Uh, with a very long spatial coherence, about 12 micron. And in addition, because of uh, the lattice is not so perfect, so there is some minor displacement in the middle of the lattice, and it will, need, it will result in the simultaneous overlapping between uh, the, the single lob and two, two other lobs in the middle. And in, in this case, we can observe such uh, interference actually have a pi phase shift from the curve here. So this actually result from the, um, the, the simultaneous overlapping between one lob and two other lobs in the image also suggests a pi phase shift for, for these two nearest uh, lobs in the pillar. So, so having shown that we can trap those polaritons with pillars to serve as artificial atoms, in this case, we can really emulate uh, electron Hamiltonians, for example, to extend topology, top, top, topology into the system. So as Good. we- I had a quick question. Um, oh, yeah, so, sure. Yes, yeah, so, so you, you said a couple of slides ago um, that one more slide before that, um, if you can go back one more slide, you said that this was the first uh, room temperature uh, realization of polariton condensation in a strong lattice. So what, what yes. do you mean strong lattice? Uh, yes, so we usually define the strong lattice as uh, the gap opening in respect to its, uh, its line width. So in, in some cases, the gap opens is actually very small, but the line width is, is uh, a little bit large. So which makes this gap opening is not so clear. I so in, in our case, the gap is very large, it's much larger than this uh, line width. So we can, yeah, we can clearly see such gap opening this I see. Event, yeah. I, I see. So, 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 what's the significance of having large band gap opening? That's one. And number two, um, it looks like you you put a proviso, which is um, you know, it's the first room temperature realization of polariton condensation in a strong lattice. Was was room temperature polariton condensation achieved before in some other type of lattice? Uh, not yet. So your yours is the first um uh um kind of um a room temperature um. Uh, polariton condensation. Uh, in a lattice, yeah. In a lattice, oh, I see, yes. in a lattice, I see. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you, thanks very much. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so, so in the following, I'm going to introduce our uh, progress, how we, we, we emulate topological phase with polariton system. So as we know, the history of topology can actually date back to the discovery of quantum Hall effect 
uh, in, in a two-dimensional el electron gas where people observe those quantized hole conductors. And since then, various type of topological insulator have been discovered uh, in condensed matter where they can, for example, support unidirectional uh, transport of the electrons with strong immunity to disorders. Well, since then, the notion of topology have largely extended to other research fields, for example, acoustics, uh, electronic circuits, as well as photonics for their uh, topological robustness. And in particular, in topological photonics, topology have largely changed the design uh, principle of photonic devices. And the history of topo topological photonics can actually date back to the Howden model, where, uh, as we know, in, in, in condensed matter system, to, to realize those unidirectional uh, transport, we usually need to break the time reversal symmetry. Well, in this case, in this uh, Howden model, they, they effectively uh, break those uh, time reversal symmetry. Well, until 2009, the MIT group, which is actually the work of Prof. Chong uh, Yidong's group, um, actually demonstrate this chiral uh, A state with a photon crystal under a very small uh, magnetic field. So since then, a lot of efforts have been devoted in topological photonics for various types of phenomena, as well as a lot of uh, outstanding professors in our division with their um, amazing works. So in more recent years, there have been some growing interest to, to uh, introduce to introduce new degree of freedom in, inside the system such that we can have some tunability, for example, phase tunability. Well, in topological system, one of the most simplest model is the 1D SH model, so shared vehicular model that actually originated for, from a very old uh, organic material called satellite with a staggered structure. So if we look at the structure, um, the union cell consists of two atoms as shown here. And the Hamiltonian can be represented basically by this intracell hopping T as well as this intracell, intracell hopping T prime. So essentially the uh, phases of this 1D SH model is largely determined by this uh, hopping amplitude. Uh, I mean, the relative strength of these two hopping amplitudes. So as, we, as shown here, for example, if we have T larger than the T prime, we will have a gap opening, but without any state inside that corresponding to a conventional insulator phase. If we have an equal amplitude, well, we will not have any gap opening that correspond to a metal phase. Well, another phase is the uh, topological insulator phase, which is non-trivial, where, where we have this uh, intracell hopping smaller than this intracell hopping, where in this case, gap opens inside the band structure with uh, a state inside. So which corresponding to this uh, topological insulator phase. Well, before I go into the details, how we use this 1D SH model to, to have some phase tunability, I would like to introduce a little bit more about uh, the, the photonic spin orbital coupling inside polariton system. So as we know, uh, when the light propagates inside this uh, plantar micro cavity, due to the boundary conditions for, for different polarized uh, light at the interface of those uh, di dielectric layers, they will result in a, a splitting at a high K state, where at the ground state, they are degenerate in energy. So this is the so-called uh, photonic spin orbit coupling that actually um, change the, the, the curvature of those, those modes. So if we write the Hamiltonian, we, can, we will need to add additional term, which serves as a effective magnetic field to, to rotate the, the pseudo spin of plant state in moment and space. So this photonic spin orbit coupling actually, actually is also the basis to, uh, the, for the realization of optical spin hole effect with polaritons. And another consequence of this photonic spin orbit coupling is that they modify the curvature of those uh, linear polarized dispersions that result in anisotropy with distinct effective mass. Well, in polar in a perovskite system, this photonic spin orbit coupling is more obvious since intrinsically, a uh, perovskite system have some linear biofringency 
that actually leave the degeneracy at the ground state with a peak splitting. Well, in this case, combine the conventional photonic spin orbit coupling with this linear uh, biofrequency, we will have such dispersions. Well, as you can see here along kx direction, well, these two uh, bands will get crossed at these two crossing points, while along the other direction for ky, these two bands will never touch. So in this case, um, we will understand from the dispersion that for expolarization, these two uh, branch, for, for example, for polaritons uh, propagate along X direction or Y direction, they will have a effective mass ratio of around 0 0.7. While for Y, direct, for y polarization, the uh, effective mass along X or Y direction, the ratio is larger than one, which, which is equal to 1.3. So in this case, we, if we combine, we combine those features with uh, lattice potential, we, we know that the hopping strength is actually directly related to this effective mass. We can really use it to, uh, to, to, to achieve distinct uh, phases with a topology structure. Well, this is uh, how, how we do with a zigzag chain. So basically, with the same method, we introduce a zigzag chain into the uh, perovskite system where we intentionally align those long chain around 45 degree uh, respect to the crystal axis of the perovskite crystal. In this case, we can make sure that the hopping direction inside the lattice, inside the zigzag lattice can be uh, along the crystal axis or perpendicular. So in this case, we can make use of those uh, features under different polarization to create a uh, different topological phase. So here we theoretically, uh, we can reproduce those, um, the best structure as shown here under X polarization, which corresponding to this uh, topological trivial phase, we only see a gap opening inside. While for Y polarization, which corresponding to the non-trivial phase, uh, we, in addition to the gap opening, we also see some state inside that corresponding to the A state. Well, this theory is actually done by our group team's Lewis group. So in order to probe those features experimentally, we carry out those angle resolved or momentum resolved spectrum uh, measurement. So as you can see here, if we uh, use a, a exploration, we only see a gap opening inside this uh, S band. While if we change it to the Y polarization, in addition to this gap opening, we also see some state inside that is actually the topological A state. So in order to confirm such A state, we carry out this energy resolved uh, spatial image measurement. As you can see inside the gap, uh, the state is mostly uh, lo localized in the edges. This can also be confirmed by this uh, real space image. So this suggests us in exploration, uh, those, this, this polariton lattice is actually in a trivial phase without any edge state. While in wide polarization, uh, the, the polariton lattice is actually in a non-trivial topological phase with a uh, localized uh, edge state. So this suggests we can really tune those phases by a, a polarization control. So, so in addition, um, we know that topological A state have some uh, robustness because of the topology. And if we look at the Hamiltonian of this uh, SH model, we understand that it actually have a chiral symmetry. The consequence of this chiral symmetry is that, well, the uh, edge state always locates in the middle of the gap. And with respect to this uh, edge state, we always have one-to-one -one correspondence in, 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 in the bulk state. So in this case, if we introduce any perturbation in terms of their hopping strength, the only consequence is, is that they only modify the gap size, but will not change the uh, relative position of this edge state. Well, another more worst um, perturbation is that the on-site energy perturbation uh, on each pillar, for example. So in this, in this case, we will need to add additional uh, individual term into this Hamiltonian that actually breaks the chiral symmetry. 
uh, will, will, will make this A state no longer in the middle of the gap. So indeed, we have shown such, uh, we have introduced such uh, on-site energy variation. As you can see from this uh, spatial image, we can see those energy in this indeed varies, but from their dispersion, we still can observe such uh, edge state uh, in the gap is actually quite close to the limit of the gap. So this suggests that uh, those edge states rem remains very still robust against such on-site energy variations of around uh, 70 MeV from theory. So, um, so, so here comes to, to the summary. Uh, in this talk, we have demonstrated uh, the polar condensation in, in a perovskite plantar microcavity as well as the strong nonlinear phenomenon, the pro, uh, parametric scattering effect. And we, in addition, we also create such um, a propagating polar condensate flow with long range propagation of around 60 micron uh, with high group velocity. In addition, by introducing those uh, periodic potential inside the system, we are able to uh, create uh, those very giant gap opening of around uh, 30 MeV at room temperature. So, so having trapped those polar atoms with pillars, we are, uh, we are able to emulate those electron Hamiltonians, for example, the uh, ASH model to have some phase tenability uh, with bipolarization control. So, uh, so since we know that the one of the main advantage for uh, polar atom system is that they have some strong nonlinearity from their acetonic component. In this case, uh, one of the promising uh, direction for this field is to reach a, a very strong nonlinearity up to single particle uh, regime that actually can create uh, quantum polar atoms to bring all the things into quantum regime. And this, this feature can, can be further uh, used to create, for example, on-chip scalable quantum light sources or, uh, or those quantum devices, quantum switches, transistors, as well as topological robust uh, devices. So in the end, I would like to thank a lot of uh, people, including my supervisor, and as well as our collaborator, as well as uh, uh, my current supervisor, and also our previous strong group. And also would like to thanks for, for your attention. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you Ray, for this very interesting talks, very broad uh, topics. Okay, so uh, we still have time for question, of course. Who wants to ask questions? Justin? Sure. So I have a quick, quick question. So, so, so you, yeah, sure. you, you said it was, this is very interesting work, but so, so, so um, you said you were able to um, show some kind of um, polariton condensation um, uh, flow, right? So this was yes. your 2019 um, science advances paper, I think. Oh um, uh, yeah. Well, if you go to the conclusion slide, um, just, just the conclusion slide. You have a conclusion. Yeah, very good. So you, you said you know there is some kind of condensate flow. Um, I, I, is this condensate flow a superfluidity? Is it is it a superfluid flow or is it not superfluid flow? Oh, not not yet. It's it's not a superfluid flow. It's just just a propagating condensate. Yeah, it's not the. So so how what what do you need to do to be able to um to achieve uh, superfluidity? What, what what's stopping it? Or are you able to achieve it or not achieve it? Um, from from an in principle point of view, or or is it just uh, some kind of parameters? Uh, still not so good yet. So, um, so actually, we we have not tried yet in with our system. But but actually, uh, okay, it's, it's maybe not very good to to say. But I I indeed have seen someone have realized such phenomenon with peroxide peroxide system. So it, it is in principle possible. Yeah, it's it's in principle possible. Yes. And, and could I ask just one more question about this as well? So, so they, they, they were able to, to, to achieve it maybe, maybe in a trap or something, but achieving it in a lattice is, is having a lattice, um, a, a kind of um, a, a stumbling block to achieving superfluidity or no? Or is it just, it's just um, that you haven't tried yet? Uh, actually, we, we did not go to the, this research area or not. 
Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Uh, Jesus, you want to ask a question? You are muted. Yeah. <laughs> so, so very nice talk. A uh, very impressive talk. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks. I, I know. I, I know very well your results. I, I just had. To Two questions. Uh, uh, I was surprised uh, on, on one of your first papers, you showed just these whispering gallery modes where you showed lacing thresholds in the order of two microjoules per square centimeter. Oh, yes. And finally, you said that, okay, we all want to use polaritons because in principle, we can expect uh, lower polariton lacing thresholds. And then you speak about lacing thresholds, polariton lacing thresholds in the order of 10 microjoules per square yes, centimeter. Yes. Can you comment on that? Oh uh, yes. So so first of all, since uh, so so since since this individual crystals we do not have any fabrication weight, so it means we, we did not introduce any damage on it. But you, you you must know that if we want to uh fabricate into a, a, a complete micro cavity we will need to a long very long time of depositions of those dielectric uh, layers. So this process is actually uh, detrimental to this, the quality of the, the, the sample actually. Yeah. So I, I think that is the main reason why we get a higher yeah, threshold. Okay. Okay. I understand. And I had a, another question relating uh, your, your uh, pair of sky wires where, where uh -huh. you show the, the, where you show the interference, interference fringes. Yes. And yeah, here, for example, uh, have you tried to prepare facets that showed a larger reflectivity? Because here we show that we, we see that the, the facet on the right is like a broken facet. So I guess the reflectivity for polaritons is oh. not so large. Have you tried to prepare uh, real mirrors on the sides? Oh, no, because actually we don't know how to prepare such mirrors on the lateral side. Yeah. It could be a very interesting idea, actually. Okay. Uh, yes. And one final question, David, if I have the time. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Jill. Uh, yeah, so uh, in, in your last part, you showed that we have the crossing, you have the crossing of the, uh, of the polarization dependent dispersions. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you comment? We expect to have exceptional points very close, or let's say close to. Can, can you comment on that? Because I, mean, oh. I guess you can also play with the, the topology of the exceptional points there without the lattice, I mean. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Indeed, I, I, actually, we have a very recent public publication okay. about uh, this, this, this uh, non permission except, exception point due to this crossing. Yeah, we indeed have such. Uh, uh, study, but I did not show here because of the limit of the time. Yeah. Oh, okay, and, and the question is, can you imagine how you could couple the, the anisotropy of the, let's say, of the lattice with this uh, effect with exceptional points? Do you have any idea what could you try to do? Um, with lattice? Yeah. So actually, we, currently, we did not think about that yet. Yeah, but yeah, we, we probably can think more about it. Okay, thank you very much. A very nice talk. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Other questions? Uh, okay, I, I have I have also uh, I mean two two short questions. I mean you 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 made some parallel with coal atoms. That's a topic that I'm familiar with. And so in coal atoms, I mean I think one of the important uh, uh, knob is, is, the, is the interaction that we, we can tune mm. to flashback resonance, for example. I mean, uh, so my question is that does this kind of knob exist also in, 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 in polaritonic physics? Uh, you mean what? You mean the interaction? Yes, can you tune the interaction in some sense? Oh, yes. Uh, so in, in principle, the interaction for a polariton system actually uh, comes from the, the astonic component. So, which means that, for example, if we can tune precisely the, the astonic components, we, we are able to tune those polariton states. Yeah. I see. And, and another question also, I mean, you, so yes, you, you, you show that, that 
So you, you reach strong cooping regime actually, and, and the rabbit splitting is, is very large uh, in, mm -hmm. your, in your system. Yes. And, and there is another uh, regime which we call the, the hyper or super strong uh, coupling, where oh. the, the, the rabbit splitting is in the order of magnitude of the transition itself. I mean, yes. is it something that eventually can be achieved also in this kind of system? Uh, I think currently we cannot get the ultra strong top regime because the, the rabbi splitting is still not enough. No. Yeah, but we, we have currently, I would say that the rabbi splitting is mainly determined by the, this material itself in the production system. Well, we currently have no, no way to, to really um, tune it effectively to enhance it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Other questions? Okay, so if not, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rui. All the okay, best thanks. for for, uh, for the NEP and uh, okay, hope thanks. to see you around in the corridor somewhere. Yeah, bye bye. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody.